Hey guys, welcome back to the Kin Woman Home. I'm Shara, and today we are wrapping up. Are we wrapping this up? Is this the last episode? We're almost wrapping up this series called Design Questions Answered, where we answer your design questions. Can you see me in the mirror here? Is that distracting? If you are new to this series, just know we have a couple other episodes already out there in the world on different topics. We have one on bedrooms, we have one on floor plan and layout, we have one on accessorizing and styling, and today's episode is all about lighting. Oh, that's why I wore my bright, happy, beautiful dress from Wilhelmina. You submitted these questions on Instagram, I brought them over here to YouTube, and I'm answering all the questions in 10 minutes, and I'm gonna try to do it very fast and efficient so we get them all done. I actually completed all of the questions in the last video we did, let's see if I can do it again today. Today's question of the video has nothing to do with the subject of what we're talking about, but it is a fun one. What is your favorite cereal? Comment your answer below. Well, if I'm trying to be like quasi-healthy, I like honey bunches of oats with almonds and ice in my milk. Don't call me weird until you've tried it, okay? And if I'm trying to be bad, I like Lucky Charms with extra marshmallows. I haven't tried chocolate Lucky Charms. <laughs> you need to try them. <laughs> chocolate Lucky chocolate. Charms? That exists? It's not Cocoa Puffs? Don't tell Tyler. And whenever I send Tyler to the store, he comes home with Oreos, some sort of terrible sugar cereal, and Pop-Tarts. I'm like, get this junk out of my house, but also, I would like one of each. Wait, how much time do I have left? Three, two, one. Start your engines. Okay, mixing lighting styles. I would recommend sticking to two different metals. You could do things all in the same metal if you want, but I wouldn't do more than two different metals. And then I would just play around with the shapes. If one thing has a shade on it, maybe do something that's a little bit more open and exposed. If one thing is, you know, dark metal, maybe brighten it up with a lighter linen or something and kind of contrast and combine different textures, but keep it to two different options and try to have different shapes that are corresponding to each other, but not the exact same everywhere. Love plug-in sconces. And I have to say, when I was renting, that was like, you know, that's the go-to because you don't have to hardwire anything. It was so hard to find a stink and plug-in anything. It was like Target came out with one and it was sold out in a matter of minutes. Or you have to buy some expensive one on some really random website on Etsy or like in Europe. I'm happy to report, they have so many plug-in fixtures now that are amazing. Places like Amazon, places like Target, places like schoolhouse lighting, all kinds of places. I will try to link a few for you below. Now, if you're not renting, I really like hardwiring things too. I think it just looks better, but it's an amazing option if you are renting. It really depends on the size of your island, but I would say a minimum of 10 inches wide is kind of like the smallest I would recommend going. If you only have two, you could go a little bit bigger. If you're trying to do three, you know, minimum would be 10 inches, but you could always, most people could go bigger than that. So floor lamps are great and table lamps are great. It just depends on kind of your layout again. So if you have a chair that's kind of in the corner, I think a floor lamp looks really great with that. If you have a L sectional or if you have two sofas and two chairs and you have like a side table, it'd be great to do a table lamp on that. But also I think mixing different types of lighting in a space is really great. You don't wanna have all floor lamps or all side table lamps or all just can lighting having a mixture of all different types and three different styles is really great. Don't overdo it with the recessed lighting because it can be, they are, they're bright, so you don't want to like be in a hospital room. And then if you do recessed lighting, make sure you do them on dimmers. And we kind of already talked about this, but the plug-in sconces, plug-in chandeliers with a hook in the ceiling where you can just hook it right on there. If I ever had hardwired lighting, I would always replace that light fixture with my own and then I would keep the original in my garage or some storage area. And when I moved out, I would just swap it back out. You can go on like TaskRabbit and get an electrician that comes for 50 bucks and switches out your light fixtures for you. Highly recommend it because light fixtures make a rented space look so custom. Well, that just depends on the size of your space and the type of lighting plan. If you have a smaller space, you're gonna wanna do more of a basic lighting plan. If you have a bigger space, you're gonna wanna do more of an advanced lighting plan and that's gonna be based on your layout of your furniture. If you're a member of the design sessions, highly recommend going and watching my mom's episodes on lighting. She talks all about her advanced lighting plans and the way that she goes about it, but that's a really great resource for people that have questions about that. I tend to always like warm. 3000 Kelvin is my sweet spot. I don't really tend to go for too much more blue than that. So 
I would recommend sticking around 3,000. Probably lamps are the most affordable way to add lighting to a room. Also, if you can, if you do have a little bit of a budget, do recess lights and look into wafer lights. Wafer lights are LED, that's what we did, and they're this thin. And a, a traditional canned light box is this big. So normally, when an electrician comes in, he's gotta make these huge gaping holes in your ceilings to put these big boxes in. With wafer lights, they just have to like cookie cutter a little circle in your ceiling and then pop them in. Yes, I do believe you can use lighting with two different metals. I think it actually looks better when you mix your metals and like liven it up a little bit. Use undermount lighting anytime you want to kind of brighten a workspace or highlight an area below it. Specifically like in a kitchen, if you wanna brighten up your counter space. Or if you have built-in and you wanna liven up the shelves, you can do lighting in each shelf, brightens up the space and adds some focal lighting to that area. Gaunce is in a hallway, well, I would say about six feet in a hallway is a good space between. You also, it, it lightens up the hallway so you don't have like some spotty areas. Also, when they're six feet apart, you have enough space to do artwork if you want to do something or framed photos or something down the hallway. Um, I just noticed that Amazon actually has a ton of light fixtures. We've been working on a new course and I've been scouring the internet and Amazon, I'm like so impressed. They've got so many different light fixtures on there and they're very affordable. Online, you're able to find more options, I feel like, via Target for different plug-in sconces, sometimes hardwired sconces and, and chandeliers. Sometimes you can get them in store, but they just sell out really fast, I found. And then places like Lamps Plus is really good, usually pretty affordable. Those are my go-tos. Well, as far as like where I want lighting, that's decided on really early because you have to walk through with an electrician and kind of like place all those different boxes and things. But as far as like actually picking um, the specific light fixture, that usually happens during the selection process. I only put them in rooms and use them when the airflow situation in the room is poor and it's purely based on comfortability. In that case, then I will try to find one that's discreet. If there's recessed lighting in the room, I wouldn't put a light on the fan. If there's no recessed lighting and you absolutely have to, make it like a really discreet light, not like a giant bulb. How do I what? Light a dining table. <laughs> like wait, what did you say? How do you light a dining table? You put a light in the ceiling. No, um, I think obviously you can use chandelier or a pendant, but I would recommend doing something, I like using like more long, chandeliers that kind of, they don't go the whole span of the dining table, but they go, you know, they're not just like one little pendant, which is kind of like elongates and kind of allows for the eye to see the whole space. And I think it lights up the area really, really well. Oh, that was it. Dang. Okay. Well, how, did I get through all of the questions? I successfully got through all the questions again. I'm getting really good at this. That was really fun. Do you guys have fun watching these? I have fun answering them because they're just very much like to the point, move it on, and that feels good to accomplish a lot of questions. Thanks for submitting all your questions. Okay guys, that is all I have for you today. I hope that this was very informative. Make sure you go back and watch the other videos in this series if you have questions about other topics to do with your home and interior design. And remember, if you're a Design Sessions member, you can enter your specific home questions via our uh, monthly Q&A that my mom and I do on that platform. And if you're a Design Sessions member, do not forget, we have a $25,000 giveaway, home decor, home makeover giveaway. And the, there will be a one winner that's picked at the end of the year in December. For those of you that are already members, don't worry, you are already entered to win. If you are new and you wanna go sign up, I will link it below. It's $10 a month, you get access to over 100 hours of interior design content, so much to watch, so much to learn especially if you're in the middle of a project or you just love interior design and you love watching all the things, highly recommend it. We have a seven day free trial if you wanna just check it out. You can watch anytime, you can watch anywhere and you can cancel at any time. And remember, if you are in the US or in Canada, excluding Quebec, you can enter to win that giveaway. We've never done anything like it before, so I'm super excited about it. Okay guys, thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Make sure you thumbs it up, leave your comment and hit the subscribe button and I will see you next time.